Hi guys, I'm back. I'm going to explain to you the um, main points of chapter 11. The whole chapter is about motion. So motion is something's change in position relative to some kind of a reference point. You may not have even thought of it, but we always look for things that aren't moving or things that are still in order to tell that something is actually moving. This is actually called a frame of reference, okay? So a frame of reference, it's our way of specifying an object's precise location. Here's an example. If I have a ball rolling off of the edge of a table, I first, before it ever starts, I see that the ball is on the table, I see that the ball is then beside the table, and finally I see that the ball has hit the floor. We're able to tell that the ball was moving because of our frame of reference, the table, told us that the ball was moving relative to the table. Um, the second big idea is the difference between distance and displacement. So if I start here and I move all the way around in a circuit, that's the distance I've traveled. The difference between displacement and distance is displacement is the shortest route between my starting point and my ending point. That's my displacement. My distance was the whole path or the whole path that an object goes. Um, our next concept, sorry guys, our next concept is going to be speed versus velocity. So if you look down here, you're all familiar with what speed is. Anyone who's ever driven knows that speed is a distance that you've gone in a certain amount of time. For example, if you're going, uh, this looks like it's right about 75 miles an hour. If you go 75 miles an hour, you know that in an entire hour of driving, you'll have traveled a distance of 75 miles. Now, velocity also involves a speed or a rate, such as miles per hour, but the difference is that um, we need to also have a specific direction. So, if you're going 75 miles per hour north, that's your velocity. 75 miles per hour is your speed. Now, when velocity changes over time, that's called acceleration. Acceleration is how velocity changes over time. Uh, you can see my first example here, there's a clock that's moving 75 miles an hour, 65 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour. We're stepping on the brake, our acceleration uh, is changing because our velocity is changing over time. Also, um, if there's a change in direction, there's a change in velocity. So if there's a change in speed or a change in direction, your velocity has changed. You can see here the ball is rolling two meters per second forward and then it's rolling backwards two meters per second. And our velocity has changed. Uh, in physics, this is an important thing to remember, braking to slow down is also an acceleration. It's considered a negative acceleration. Okay, so that brings us up to force. Okay? Um, force is anything that acts on an object in general. So it can act on an object to change its motion or it can keep it steady, but force is anything that's acting on an, on an object. We can come over to the fundamental forces. You'll be familiar with them. Gravity, which is the force that holds planets together and it holds you into your chair, in your desk, or on your bed, or wherever you're watching this video. Gravity is holding you and everything around you down. And that's a pretty strong force. But there's a stronger fundamental force, that's the electromagnetic force. Now, everything around you is made up of atoms. We've been covering atoms for most of the year. And the force that holds the electrons uh, in the cloud around an atom to the positive center of that atom, that is electromagnetic force. And that's actually stronger than gravity, even though it's working on a much smaller scale. The strongest fundamental force is nuclear force. Nuclear force holds protons and neutrons together in the nucleus of an atom. And even though that force is over a very, very small area, it is a very, very strong force. Forces can either be contact forces, such as me pushing a box across a table uh, or pulling something. 
uh, so pushing and pulling are contact forces, or field forces. Gravity is a field force. Your magnet sticking to a fridge is a field force. It doesn't require contact in order to be acting on an object. Another force that people don't think about as often, unless you're in physics class, is friction. Friction is a force that is constantly opposing motion. It can be either static friction or kinetic friction. Um, static friction is a force on objects that are not moving. It's always harder to get something started than it is to keep something going once it's already in motion. And as would be expected, it's harder to overcome static force than it is to keep kinetic force going. There's two types of kinetic force. You can have a kinetic force called sliding friction, um, which is where you're pushing something across the table, or rolling friction, which is rolling a ball. Okay? Um, now we'll talk about net force. Okay, so this is our last main point. Net force is a total of all of the different forces that are acting on an object. Um, it is the combination of all forces. And so if I have a force in this direction and a smaller force in the opposite direction, my net force is the difference between the two. So I have a really big force, I have a force that's half its size in the opposite direction, and my net force is moving half that size that way. And whatever direction our net force is going, we will also see an acceleration in that direction. Um, the other option for net force is that net force can be balanced. If net force is balanced, the two forces or all the forces combined equal zero. If all the forces combined equal zero, there is no acceleration. Um, an object won't start moving an object will keep moving the same speed, it won't slow down, it won't speed up, that would be a net force of zero, um, yeah, a net force of zero. <laughs> Sorry, stuttering a little bit there. And that is all of chapter 11 in a nutshell.